how I made this shit last Pretty down to the wake up call To the sun grows tall to the making it down Judgment is what we find That's so deep out of the ease of judgment I'm back in the past day If I want to work back
snow. like that it's another thursday night we're coming at you we are the video bros i'm bobby munson and right beside me he needs the best introduction in the world because that's how awesome he is he is mr papa smokes papa smokes how you doing tonight my man oh yeah munson i'm doing awesome and how all my wrestling people doing out there Hopefully everybody's doing good and you're ready to rock and roll and party with us, the video bros, here on your Thursday night. And I know we've got some awesome people joining us in the chat already. Ed Fry's joining us. Hey, guys, have a great show. Thank you, Ed. Glad you were able to come in here tonight. And, of course, our boy, Mr. Ryan Basser, 69. He's joining yeah. us. Yeah, buddy. How you doing? Thanks for checking us out. And uh, we got Bum on Tap giving us a tab here tonight. Thanks, my man, for keeping us open, keeping us in your thoughts. Always appreciate it. And Melball, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, uh, you know, we'll take it. We'll take it at this point. We're, we're we're getting there. We're getting there. We clean up nicely every once in a while, especially on a Thursday night. But it's party time with each and every one of you. And cheers. And, of course, we can't go a show without saying hi to a dedicated fan right there, Auntie Wooji, wonderful friend, and going to be joining us on December 10th at the next Prairie Pro Wrestling Show. And, you know, we just wrapped up an interview with one El Asesino for the latest edition of the Bro Show that's going to be dropping on Prairie Pro Wrestling's YouTube channel tomorrow night. Bubba Smokes, that is going to be an interesting conversation for everybody to see what an interview we had go down tonight. Yeah, I must say it was an extreme pleasure to have one of PPW's top guys, perhaps its top guy, on the Bro Show, on our uh, interview segment show that was really fun, but uh, he is an intense guy, and uh, he's not the kind of guy you sit down and have a chit-chat with. He had some serious business to talk about, and all the PPW fans are going to hear about that soon. Yeah, and again, it's going to be awesome when that drops, so make sure to tune in. Can't wait for the interview and the show. Yeah, it's a great, uh, again, uh, the Pro Show is about a 10-minute show where we interview Prairie Pro Wrestling uh, talent that they're talking about the next event coming about, and man, L.S. Cicito is a man of many words, and he had a lot to say, Paul. So I can't wait for that to drop tomorrow night. But the real reason we're all here on a Thursday night is not to talk all, just primarily about Prairie Pro Wrestling. It's to talk about Major League Wrestling in the form of MLW Fusion. Tonight is Super Series, and we had a couple of big matchups on the card here tonight, Papa Smokes, and a lot that went down as well in the build to next week. They're leading up to some pretty fantastic stuff coming up. Here, and we're going to unfold all of that for you guys here tonight. Make sure that if you're joining us in the chat, that you go ahead and throw your questions out there. You want to ask us anything, go ahead, throw it out there. We're happy to answer every single question that you have. At the same time, if you notice that you get a little bit of advertising at the beginning of the channel, you can go ahead and give us a sub. That will give you an ad-free experience right here on either our local establishment or on the Video Bro Bobby Munts Twitch channels. But if you're tuning in from YouTube, if you do us a favor over on the Video Bros Network, give us a sub. We are kicking those subs in a high gear for the first time in a long time, Pop of Smoke. People are checking out the show. Things are going up, 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 up for the Video Bros. The watch hours are up, and it's all thanks to all of you and your dedicated support. We appreciate that, and that's why we do this each and every week. Man, it's it's an exciting time, Pop Smokes. Yeah, isn't it? And it's just great that we've been working at this project for a long time now. And just to feel the wheels dig in and to make some progress, uh, making it big on Twitch now and uh, and in the YouTube world, we're, we're doing good, man. We can we can do anything, Munson. We just need to set our minds to it. And you guys should stay tuned because not only are we going to have some more interviews coming up for you guys from MLW Talent right here on Fusion 
very, very soon, hopefully. Uh, but we're also going to be joined by somebody that we are lining up here in December for an episode of Ring Respect Radio. That is going to be an awesome interview that I just kind of got secured for us today. Looking forward to that one. Uh, more information on that one to come very, very shortly. But Papa Smokes, let's break down MLW Fusion here tonight. Uh, Build as Super Series 2022. This one moving finally from the New York tapings over to Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, so different look to the uh, arena, different crowd, definitely. This crowd, very, very noisy, but it seemed like a very a much bigger arena than the one that they were doing in New York City. Uh, this one felt a lot more open, but they had that, almost that triple screen across the front of it. I I didn't mind the look of this. This had an all right look to it. Yeah, it looked pretty cool. And um, yeah, like you say, the, the fans were dedicated and loud. As we saw a strong uh, Lucha presence on this show, they seem to have a a, a large Latin uh, uh, crowd going on here. And they had Mexican flags everywhere. And they were just all about these Lucha matches on this card. Yeah, the Lucha matches were hot in good old hot Atlanta here tonight. We started off with that Luchadora I think it was billed as an elimination matchup, but it ended up being just a, yeah, a four-way matchup in the end. I kind of questioned that one a little bit, but we won't harp on that too much. Uh, before the Luchadoras were introduced, though, we were introduced to the MLW featherweight champion, Miss uh, Taya Valkyrie, who came down to join the commentary team. And again, Taya is a fantastic star for MLW. Uh, her presence, the way she looks, the way she presents herself as a champion coming out doing the commentary. She is the baby face they needed to get this featherweight division into high gear. And the best part is, is she knows all four ladies involved here. This is a great opportunity to see some new faces that they continue to build this division. Yeah, and as we know, we're proud to uh, claim Taya Valkyrie as a Canadian too. She's from Victoria, BC, but she did a lot of her training down in Mexico, hence uh, she's got a lot of skill um, in technical mat work and uh, not to mention uh, some high-flying stuff too. So she knows and, as she said on commentary, has wrestled with and traveled with and roomed with some of these uh, some of the ladies in this uh, four uh, Luchadora match here. So very interesting. Okay, and so we're going to kick off with uh, who was in this matchup, Pop Smokes. I'm going to list uh, who came out in yeah. order. Uh, then we'll talk a little bit about the match, kind of break it down for everybody. Uh, started off uh, the introduction of Lady Flammer, I believe is the name, uh, the yeah. way it's pronounced anyway. Uh, up next, we had uh, La Hydra, I believe. Uh, of course, the announcer. Yeah. La Hydra. They had a bit of a role to it. Yeah. He's, he's minted doing that. Uh, then afterwards, uh, Reina Dorada. And uh, you... You understood the uh, the name behind this one. Just explain quickly. Well, I think that means Queen of Gold, hey, or Gold Queen, I believe. So she had an all gold outfit on. Yeah, she really did, and that uh, definitely was a standout. And then Lady uh, Shawnee was the last entrant into this particular yeah. matchup. And again, she had a really, really cool robe when she came out, cool outfit. And again, another one that stood out that I was kind of uh, like, look, this is going to be awesome. Uh, La Hydra looks like she's got some strength and power to her man she is something else uh, a presence to behold as well too so i was very invested in checking this out again it's hard with these four-way matches because everybody wants to get their stuff in everybody wants to get everything that they can uh but again we got some got some good stuff from all four parties getting an opportunity to see them uh what this match really did is left me clamoring for more opportunity to see them in the one-on-one -on -one matchups uh we'll talk about that in a minute because we <clears> will <throat> have one coming up because the winner of this taking on Ty of valkyrie but uh give us a little breakdown pop smokes your thoughts on the match itself well yeah this was pretty cool uh these ladies obviously all knew each other and um they uh, put on a, a, a four-way match that's uh, kind of like a, a, a classic four-way match. They, they did a lot of stuff that was, um, they just paired up and did some, uh, did some spots together. A lot of Lucha stuff. Um, this, this got into a couple of moments that were a tiny bit silly as well, which, which is kind of to be expected from um, some Lucha matches. Uh, included in that would be uh, when they all sat cross-legged in a circle and had a little chopping uh, match yeah. that went around the circle. That, that that was a bit much for me, but um, I think this match was good. They got to show off some of the, the Mexican talent that they have, get these uh, ladies a match on 
not exactly uh, cable TV, but still uh, being taped for TV. This is a good experience for all of them. It's a good way to get this uh, MLW featherweights division going finally, like we've wanted them to get some momentum with this finally. Okay, good. They got a legit champ in Taya Valkyrie who has a, an excellent pedigree in the business and all that. And then now who's her first challenger going to be? One of these four uh, awesome looking luchadoras and uh, they, they wanted to show their stuff. And, and that's what we got out of this match. Uh, just a little bit of a showcase of what these uh, ladies can do. Yeah, and I was I was surprised too because when they announced Lady Shawnee, the announcer did a great job of kind of introducing who each competitor was, giving a bit of a background, but did mention she is a former two-time Reina de Reina's champion. Uh, and I kind of was thinking that might be the direction they go with having her be a former two-time champion over in uh, Dragon Gate there. Or sorry, Dragon Gate, AAA. Sorry, this was the, the cross between Dragon Gate and AAA, but this was AAA that these ladies cover from. Yeah. Uh, I thought that's the direction they would go, but no, they are actually going with Lady Flommer, who they did indicate has quite the history with Taya Valkyrie from their time back in AAA. And that was on display after Lady Flommer winning this matchup, goes up to the commentary area and has her go at Taya Valkyrie. And man, Taya, when she stands up there, she looks intimidating. She looks like she's ready to fight. But Flommer not, or sorry, <laughs> yeah, Flommer not backing down at all, right in Taya's face, right on the attack. I'm invested enough that I want to see where this one goes. I want to see what Lady Flower brings to the table in one-on-one -on -one competition. But same goes for all of the women in this matchup. I want to see what their abilities are like once they utilize them in those singles matchups. Yeah, I got to agree with you. I mean, they, Lady Flower went over in this match, but they all looked pretty good. I think that she looked the best, the, the winner looked the best out of these ones, But and, and I think it was a good choice to go with her versus Valkyrie. If they have history together too, then then chances are they can put on a pretty hot match together, then that's going to be good, right? That'll be good for the uh, featherweight division. But um, yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I'd be into seeing more matches with all of these, but I think it, it'd just be better if to, I would be more interested in seeing one-on-one -on -one matches with a little bit of storytelling, with a little bit of time to use, and uh, not just rushing around in a four-way match trying to get all your stuff in. Yeah, so we'll, we'll get to see more of that coming up. I'm very interested to see this match go down. We know that's going to come at uh, probably the next set of tapings, I would imagine. So once they get through these ones in Atlanta, it'll roll into the next set. We'll get that opportunity to see that on an upcoming episode of MLW Fusion. Uh, right after the wrap of this matchup, we got some fun. This is a good old time. We got the Samoan SWAT team, Jacob Fatu, Juicy Finau, and our boy Lance Atawaii sitting around a table poolside and drinking some brewski, celebrating and talking about Fatu's big win in the Battle Riot. But Fatu also posed the question to the other two boys, when you boys going for those tag team titles? And you know what? That's a question we asked too, and we posed that. You posed that to Lance Atawaii when he was on our show. What are you guys going after him? Are you going to go after Hustle and Power and take the straps off the champs? Yeah, this is like music to my ears too. We wondered what was going to happen with the Samoan SWAT team as a three-man team. Uh, and, and now it's all laid out nicely. Jacob Fatu won the Battle Riot, so he's got a World Heavyweight Championship match upcoming in his future, which leaves the other two guys open. Well... They just, this is perfect then. They can enter the tag team fray. They can uh, try and make, get themselves uh, in the position to get a shot against Tankman and Nduka. And uh, yeah, like we've talked about this tag team division in MLW many times before. And uh, there's some talent there too. And they bring other t talent in. So uh, this is good, man. We, we need to get uh, the Von Eriks back in this if they're kicking around and a few other of the tag teams around here, and uh, let's get it going and let's get some title shots. We haven't seen uh, Hustle and Power defend the tag team titles in quite some time now, so let's get it going. I want a title match. And speaking of the Vaughn Eriks, i uh, hoping to maybe one day lock up that interview still. Marshall, my man, gonna reach yeah. out, dude. It's, it's been a while, like... Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk, we'll talk. We'll get them on the show. I really want to get Marshall on the show sometime, Pop Smokes. I think it would be a real honor to get oh, those yeah. guys. But then again, 
it's an honor when we get anybody here on the show. So again, anybody tuning in, if uh, anybody wants the opportunity to come hang out and party with the Video Bros on a Thursday night, damn it, we want to have you on the show. We have a good old time here on Thursdays, and we love every single one of you in the chat as well, too. Keep it active. Make sure to get your questions in for myself and Papa Smokes throughout the stream. We're having a good old time, and the business is picking up. And business really picked up in this next segment, Pops, folks. We saw a recap of last week when EJ and Duca shocked the world, turned on Alexander Hammerstone, hit him in the back of the head with his tag team title after Hammer agreed to a one-on-one matchup with the judge for the MLW Championship. The undefeated EJ and Duca was showing up earlier in the night in the parking lot. He was bombarded and asked the question, and Duca, why? Why did you do it, and Duca? And Duca had a lot to say, a lot to say, Pop Smokes. And holy shit, EJ and Duca came to play tonight. This promo was straight fire out of the judge. Oh my, you're playing in the judge's courthouse. Man, stamp that. That was beautiful by Duca. And now, now I am a believer that EJ and Duca is a massive viable threat to Hammerstone and the World Heavyweight Championship. Yeah, and if you didn't believe it just by looking at him, this promo would certainly go a long way in convincing you. Burning hot stuff from EJ and Duca. Wow, that was a very well-delivered promo. Nothing fancy, not trying to tell a story, not trying to tell some psychological battle or some kind of supernatural thing. No, just telling them I'm ready for you and I'm coming for you and you're going to have nothing against me and I'm taking that belt from you. Just the basics, but delivered so well and, and with such integrity. I, I was a thousand percent uh, invested in this. While you and I were watching it, we were both kind of just gasping and and yeah. and uh, exhaling here and there. It just it kept getting better and better. Wow, good stuff from Enduka, yeah, and probably. like you said, he cements himself into a into a main event role with performances like that, and uh, he he's making a believer out of me that this could be uh, Hammerstone's biggest challenge and possibly his demise as champion. Yeah, it's it, and you know the the target couldn't be any bigger on Alex Hammerstone's back at the moment too because. He has got, again, he's got Jacob Fatu lurking after winning the battle ride. That's got a guaranteed championship matchup down the line. You've got all these other guys, EJ and Duca. You've got Holiday, who I believe, even the, despite having taken two losses now, his time with Hammer is definitely far from over. And you've got other guys in the rankings. You've got the Bumaye Fight Club. Alex Kane at any time could go and try to claim an ch- opportunity at the champion. You've got... You know, all sorts of people on this roster. Davey Richards, who has been yeah. lighting it up since joining there, the recently crowned MLW National Openweight Champion, could make a claim to that MLW World Heavyweight Championship eventually as well, too. Everybody is after Hammer right now, and there is no hiding for Hammerstone. He doesn't have a friend of the world. Yeah, and you brought up Davey Richards. I mean, I've always thought of... Uh... What's going on over there, Munson? Oh uh, see, lights, this, the, lights the think for themselves right now, apparently. Just the beginning scene of a horror movie here. So right. maybe Ooh, Mods Kruger's pissed, in the house. Yeah, I was <laughs> going to say you pissed off Mods Kruger. Here he comes. But uh, you brought up Davey Richards, and uh, I kind of think of the MLW Openweight Championship as a little bit like the old Intercontinental Championship. It's kind of a mid-card title, but when you you have it when you're the champion of it you kind of get the nod for a a title shot here and there also right because you you, you're one of the guys wearing the belts just like uh ultimate warrior got the chance the shot against hogan when he was intercontinental champ same idea anyway that uh you put yourself in line for a title shot so i mean uh hammerstone's got no uh, no shortage of dance partners at this time. And uh, with all the matches he's doing, uh, he looks like he's getting tired. He looks like he's getting hurt and sore too. And uh, I wonder if the if that heavyweight championship is only precariously hanging around his waist at this point. 
Yeah, you bet, man. And you know, it's funny that you mentioned Mods Kruger invading me right now, Pop, because <laughs> the next segment directly involves Mr. Mods Kruger in a sense because he is not liked by one of the men on the MLW roster, one in particular anyway, who has been definitely running his mouth and had a whole lot to say about Mr. Mods Kruger, and that's old Mancer, Mance Warner. But we get to another segment where Mance is outside talking on his cell phone, and we get the camera guy coming in. Mance is now making an allegation that on the phone is his good buddy, a good a good guy he knows. Uh, I believe Doc Doc Galloway, Doc Gallows. He he is, he's saying something along those lines. Anyway, old Doc's on the phone with old Manser, and he says he's going to bring over the beer because he owes Manser. He stole all Manser's beer last time, so he's going to come over. He's bringing the beer. They're going to drink a bunch of beer, and then old Manser's got a little bit of a conspiracy to unveil. He believes. The Doc Gallows, Doc Galloway, whatever you want to call him, is who Mods Kruger is under that mask. He <laughs> says he's going to take the mask off that old son of a bitch and show the world exactly who's underneath that thing. <laughs> Mons, Mons, Mance Warner has not fought a singles match this season yet. and I almost don't even care. I am having fun with these segments so far. Yeah, he's funny, eh? and he delivers those quite well. He's a good talker. He does the little uh, skits quite well. He's invested in them. He had some funny ones the last time he was in MLW. He's always hanging around in some uh, deserted culvert, and he's drinking beer with these kind of street people and stuff. There, Some of them were quite amusing, but uh, I got to think he's getting under Man uh, Mads Kruger's skin with this one, uh, with the jokes about Doc Gallows and all that stuff. I, I don't know if that's an inside joke or not, but... I'm pretty sure Mads uh, Kruger isn't going to take kindly to the to these jokes. I'm sure he's not taking kindly to Mance Warner returning and immediately challenging him. So I, I got to think this is going to be a pretty explosive battle. I'm sure they'll have a couple of uh, gimmick matches with some insane violence in them. This is what uh, Mance Warner, the Southern psychopath, is known for. And, um, yeah, just still waiting to see some uh, in-ring collision between these two. Yeah, it's going to be coming up soon, I'd imagine. So especially now that we've switched sides to the Atlanta tapings, I'm certain that in the coming weeks we're going to end up seeing that match between Mance Warner and Juan Mods Kruger. We know it's not going to be for the fate at heart. Uh, up next, we had another promo from one Shun Skywalker or Shun Skywalker. I, I hope I'm saying that right now. Uh, one of those things. Anyway, Skywalker gets on his uh, video cam, his, his cell phone camera to cut a promo. And again, let everybody know, I am Shun Skywalker. I'm coming to MLW. And Young Goat, I'm coming after your belt. The challenge is laid on the table. And then they go to a, a video from Mr. Young Goat himself, Myron Reed, the MLW middleweight champion, who accepts the challenge for next week. It is MLW Super Fight Live. On Pro Wrestling TV, or I mean live-ish. Anyway, on Pro Wrestling TV next week, that MLW Middleweight Championship is going to be your main event on the line. Shun Skywalker going up against the champion, Myron Reed. Papa Smokes, how excited are you for this one? Quite a bit, actually. Um, this, this is looking good because uh, we always want to see this middleweight title defended more often because they have lots of... Uh, middleweights in mlw including a whole bunch of those lucha guys but now we've got dragon gate guys too and that makes it even more exciting i like to see japanese style it's a little bit different than the way we do things over here and that makes it fun byron reed will be able to hang with this style no matter what but uh shun skywalker looks like stiff competition and he looks uh very confident about this that that big devious smile that you can see through his mask there, boy, he looks like he's got something up his sleeve. He also looks very greedy to get his hands on some gold, brings back some American gold to uh, Japan in the, in the form of the MLW middleweight championship. I'm, I'm all about this match. This is going to be a, a little uh, smorgasbord of two aerial styles going on i i do believe just from some of the clips i've seen of shun skywalker this could be really hot stuff yeah i'm looking forward to it this one's going to be a total banger as the kids say i believe pop songs uh just a big shout out as well to that canada dude andre thanks for joining us here tonight and uh, i love shun skywalker then make sure to tune in 
Pro Wrestling TV next week, MLW Fusion Super Fight. It's going down for the middleweight championship against Myron Reed. And Myron Reed is damn near perfect every time he steps in the ring at MLW. I love this kid's work. He just keeps getting better and better and better. And I can't wait to see big things from this guy. Uh, but yeah, from the promo packages they have shown of Shun Skywalker, despite the fact that I have not seen a single match, I am effing excited i just about dropped it there but effing excited about this one pop smokes that main event next week is gonna be awesome and in fact the whole show look looks quite hot next week they got a bunch of good matches lined up i think this one uh the middleweight match will be the main event but uh I, i'm looking forward to this the whole show is going to be good and uh, of course we'll be here on thursday night to watch it and review it with all you guys you bet we will be. And we'll talk about the card in a little bit here. Uh, so right after this, we were expected to have a match from Killer Cross. But unfortunately, this did not go down as we came back from that promo package. It was seen that Killer Cross had been attacked backstage. And they believe that it could be linked to the attacks that have happened recently that we have seen on other members of the MLW roster. Again, that that calling card that keeps being left behind pop smokes we did find out a little bit later just after the next segment that indeed that exact card was left on killer cross as well as he was rushed to the hospital again this is very mysterious we got more to talk about on this subject so i think we'll just briefly go over this because we got more on this one towards the end of the show i'm curious to know what what do you think is going on right now yeah, I don't know. I'm very curious about this, but uh, Killer Cross also going down to an attack in the back. I mean, that's obviously someone of some strength and ferocity that can, you know, even in a sneak attack, take down a, a huge lunatic like Killer Cross. So uh, I'm very curious about this, and uh, I still want revenge for our buddy Bud Heavy. Yeah, how dare you lay your hands on Bud Heavy. We'll even we'll have to hire a hitman there again, maybe... Uh... Maybe we can uh, pay off Mocha Traps to take out whoever this is. So yeah, like yeah, right, Mr. Thomas, uh, do us a favor there. Uh, yeah. Is Killer Cross in WWE now? You bet he is, Andre, and that's the unfortunate part for MLW. Uh, they were just getting going with things with uh, both him and Scarlett when WWE made the call and brought them back. But these tapings actually go back that far that this was prior to the two of them rejoining the WWE. Uh, and yes, uh, it was, you know, it could, <laughs> it could be again. We don't know. It's uh, it's very possible. In fact, that each calling card that is left behind is a black calling card with a triangle and a circle on it. If I'm not mistaken, Bob Smokes. Yeah, it looks kind of like a V and an O or something or uh, some kind of occult symbols, but uh, don't know what it means yet. But I, I'm very curious. Yeah, me too. We're going to find out, I'm sure, soon enough, and we'll talk about that more in length here in a little bit. Uh, the next segment that we had comes from our good boys, the Bomaye, Bomaye, Bomaye Fight Club. Yes, it was Mr. Thomas and Alex Kane in the parking lot, and they're talking about Davy Richards. Alex Kane is lit up. He is mad as hell after losing his MLW uh, Openweight Championship to Davy Richards, saying that he left Davy in a world of hurt. He left Davey in a pool of his own blood, but yet Davey's the one that they're calling champion right now, that they're calling Opera Cup champion. And right then, the mystery <laughs> has been solved. It was them the whole time. The Bomaye Fight Club did attack Davey Richards in last season. They stole the Opera Cup, and they've been holding on to it this whole time. I didn't mean to point fingers. I like the Bomaye Fight Club, Pops, folks, but... It seemed like they were the only ones with a motive. And that's why I said this whole time, I only could foresee it being Alex Kane. I knew that he had to have done it because he was, first of all, he was that reserved person in last year's Opera Cup. He never got his opportunity to get into the Opera Cup and never got his opportunity to one win. He had his problems with Davey Richards with the uh, National Openweight Championship. Davey was attacked. Opera Cup was stolen. It just seemed to fit. That's why the fingers were pointed. But again, no offense to that. I'm happy that we have found the Opera Cup, and I'm happy that it's in the hands of a good party. Yeah, I got to say, I wasn't sure about your accusations to begin with because of uh, because of our buddies on the podcast and everything. But uh, yeah, I, I wondered if you might be right. And yes, your justification 
your uh, your complete uh, 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 you're able to say you were right all along now, Munson, and that's what really hurts. It really does. But at, the same time, again, at least hey, the Opera Cup is back, and if Alex Kane has it, I'm not complaining. Alex Kane have to have that Opera Cup only once. He he deserves to have it. If they would have put his ass in the Opera Cup tournament last year, there's a good opportunity he would have taken the whole damn thing in the first place. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And all it does now is is this revelation that they. He, he wanted it so bad that they were mad and they stole it. All that means is is that it's going to set up some more heat for this year's Opera Cup. Do you think Alex Kane is going to be stopped in this year's? I'm sure he will be one of the seeds in it this year, and uh, he's going to go all out to win it. Oh, he's going to tear through the competition as he continues to do on his rise to the absolute top of professional wrestling. Uh, so right after this, we had a bit of a video package reminding us that Davey Boy Smith Jr. is coming back to MLW, the former MLW World Heavyweight Champion, the catch wrestling expert, the guy who's been tearing it up all over the place, is coming back to MLW. That's coming up in the next couple of weeks. We know that that is going to be a big deal for them as Davey Boy Smith Jr. has been at the top of the card of MLW before, and he will do a great job slotting back in there on his return. Yeah, I think so too. It, Davey Boy is not uh, not uh, huge on charisma and mic work all that all that much, but his presentation is so good. Such a big guy, such a, a shoot wrestling expert, and uh, he can put on a good match. He's believable in a, on a, in a match on a high spot in the card. So uh, MLW's loving using this guy. And uh, yeah, the other companies seem to always kind of take a peek at, at Davey Boy Smith Jr., but never really uh, pull the trigger on it. So MLW would be happy to have him for uh, whatever sets of tapings they can get him for, and uh, they can put him near the top of the card. I can honestly say I'm happy to see him back. Can't wait to see his first match returning to MLW going down very shortly. But that brings us to this segment, Pop Smokes. You know I love to do this. It is time for the main event of the evening. This match scheduled for one fall. And is for the MLW World Heavyweight Championship. Here we go, Pop Smokes. It's Alexander Hammerstone. He's defending against bandito in this one and these two have encountered each other previously in mlw but this crowd in atlanta very very hot for one bandito it almost felt like he was the fan favorite here and that they wanted to see a title change go down here today yeah yeah strong strong presence for bandito he's one of those guys that when he travels around sometimes he works his heel sometimes he works his face and he he didn't uh he, he, he didn't work really as either tonight, but he was definitely the, the fan favorite in this crowd. They also liked Hammerstone. There wasn't a clear heel in this match, but uh, Pandito getting huge support amongst the Atlanta crowd. And yeah, you could feel the energy. They were fired up. Yeah, they really were. They liked this one. Again, this was, it was an interesting match. I'm not going to say this was my favorite Hammer match by any, any means. It almost seems like the clashing styles really were on display, definitely here. Uh, but again, Bandito showing a lot of a lot of strength that you expect to see out of Hammer, and a lot of the strength of Bandito on display through most of this matchup. Bandito actually getting the better of the champion, I'd say, through most of this matchup, in fact. And uh, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and ban recent posts there, because we don't put up with shit like that over on our channels. So feel free to never bring that back again. Band, get the fuck out of here. Um, anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, so Bandito really took it to Alexander Hammerstone. At one point, we thought that he was going to wrap this up. I think uh, the the what is the finish move there from Bandito? The twenty one uh, plex. The twenty one plex. What that is a nice move. I I like the look yeah. of that move. That yeah. is a solid solid move. But again, as he put it on, Hammer managing to roll outside the ring, which allowed him to kind of gain his composure, get back in this thing. This led to Hammer getting back into the ring, inevitably hitting that nightmare pendulum and picking up the one, two, three. Hammer retains the belt. Um, first, your thoughts on the match, and then we'll talk about the aftermath and everything that happened there for uh, following. Yeah, I thought it was a pretty decent match. First of all, I, I always like the way MLW sets up their title fights 
with the tail of the tape, height, weight, fighting style, record, all that kind of stuff. And uh, that, I like that because it gives it the big fight feel. And how on was that ring announcer tonight, Munson? That was some of the best. Eh? He, he was really knocking it out tonight. And it, 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 I remember that from being a kid and watching the live wrestling shows. Uh, get it that that gets the hair on your arms standing up when it's like oh geez here we go this is like the heavyweight title fight that's how they make it feel in this too and this crowd support for bandito was pretty cool uh, uh hammerstone also has a lot of supporters the guy just looks like a big baby face uh champion and all that and yeah this match was pretty all right it kind of felt like uh like a little bit clumsy in parts where, uh, you know, one was going at one speed and one was a little bit slower than that and everything. But, uh, um, yeah, I, I feel like uh, Hammerstone led this match, maybe uh, calling it out, but uh, they both got some good stuff in there. How about that? Uh, how about that uh, back, back of the head lariat from uh, uh, Hammerstone? He uses, he, I've seen him even use that as a finisher before, just that clubbing lariat to the back of the neck. That was real cool. Yeah. Then he did that other spinning kind of power bomb move. And then we hadn't seen the, uh, we hadn't seen the nightmare pendulum in some time. So a good smaller opponent, he can really get him up there for that one. And uh, that's just the most convincing finisher in wrestling. There's no kicking out of that one, two, three. Hammerstone's still the champ, but. Bandito gets a nice match out of that, and uh, and this was a good main event for this episode of Fusion. Yeah, it really was. Um, uh, Mel saying Bandito so dreamy, and then uh, style difference <laughs> for Shiz. Seeing this recently with Chris Bay in New Japan Pro Wrestling, uh, he's adjusting super fast. So, yeah, and again, that it, that's a lot of what it is. And just so you know, walked away for two seconds. Who messed with the boys? Just somebody coming in with some BS advertising for you know their this their little uh, their little get get uh get get you off sites or whatever fuck but uh yeah we just don't put up with that shit here um but anyway yeah i mean the, the, there was a bit of a clash but this it's still at the same time these are two great professionals putting on a championship matchup uh hammer looking strong again they mentioning this is his seventh championship defense uh and then afterwards bandito they show a bit of sign of respect bandito grabs a microphone and he says hammerstone Thank you, my brother, for giving me this matchup, this opportunity to come here and give me a great match. And I want to honor you with something from my home country. And he ends up singing a Spanish uh, Latino song uh, to Alexander Hammerstone. The crowd also very much knew this. And you could see how much it touched Hammer. He was very honored to be accepting this, not only from the audience, but from Bandito. Uh, such a great honor that was bestowed upon him here tonight. I thought it was a really nice touch and their their whole match had the kind of sportsmanship thing going and uh, they shook hands before and after the match. But then the singing of the song, I just wish I knew the significance of that song yeah. or what it was or what it was about. Maybe we can figure that out at some point. But the fact that the crowd also knew it uh, tells me it's something uh, involved with uh, wrestling or a general sporting uh, events in mexico and uh, yeah i'm curious to know the uh, origin of that yeah it obviously meant a lot to hammer and again obviously has not been done a whole lot in terms of north american wrestling or nothing you and i have seen so it was kind of hard to find out the context but i'm very curious to find out because with it being being such an honor bestowed upon a great champion i want to know what that means and what it means to their country as well too uh from there before we uh go any further we find out about next week's card so we're gonna see ej and duca next week in some way shape or form they've announced ej and duca gonna be in the house followed by the small and swat team in tag action so we're gonna get juicy and lance at hawaii in tag team action next week pop songs that's gonna be exciting but the big one the main event next week the middleweight championship shun skywalker debuting in mlw against the young goat myron reed again the only person in the mlw history 20 year history to ever win a championship more than once three-time mlw middleweight champion myron reed you would believe it's got to be the favorite going into this but shun skywalker is an unpredictable unknown card especially for the young goat 
I am excited. I think this one is going to be a must-watch event. Whether you're an MLW fan or not, I think you should tune in to Pro Wrestling TV next week to see this championship matchup. Yeah, I think so too. And uh, whether or not you're a fan of uh, Shun Skywalker, who looks very promising to me, uh, do yourself a favor and watch some Myron Reed. He's very creative and a uh, very skilled wrestler. I love all of his stuff. And uh, he's he's kind of a he's kind of got a good persona going, and uh, and he's very exciting as a champion as well. He he uh, he holds the belt very dearly to him, and he takes it very seriously. So this is going to be good stuff, and I, I'm I'm totally down with having the middleweight championship be the main event of next week's fusion. Yeah, and just as you think that that's going to be it for this uh, this episode, I was starting to think, okay, it's time for us to go live. <clears throat> Not quite. They had a little bit more in store for all of us. Uh, so at this point in time, that is when they go to uh, Hammer doing an interview outside the ring. And out comes EJ and Duca for another attack. He tries to get Hammer with the steel chair, but Hammer catching it this time. He sees Nduka coming, and the fight breaks out. They had to bring out the security, trying to keep these two titans apart, uh, you know, ahead of that inevitable clash that they're going to have for the MLW Heavyweight Championship. Yeah, and then Duke is showing that he means business. Uh, like, like we discussed before, he's asked Hammer nicely for a match before, and Hammer answered, yes, I will give you a shot, brother, in, in a friendly manner. But then and Duke never got that shot and never got that shot and never got the shot. So he's done with talking and he's done with asking nicely. Now he's going to attack Hammer. He's going to get Hammerstone's temper up and uh, maybe, you know, put a few nicks and bruises and injuries on him just to piss him off enough so that this heavyweight title fight happens. And it can't be long in the future before uh, Nduka gets what he's asking for. You bet it won't be. It's going to be coming up very, very soon. It's something for everybody to be excited about. So stay tuned for more from our friends over at MLW. Again, you're going to want to check out our show next week as we talk all about that big matchup. And again, if you want to join us in any capacity watching, let us know. If you want to join us on screen ever, if you're an MLW fan or you're a fan of anybody involved, if you want to join the video bros for party time Thursday night, hey, we're happy to have you. Just reach out. We're, we, we're, we're nice guys, believe it or not. Uh, we try anyway. Uh, well, I mean, there might be some things, but don't worry about it. Uh, but feel free to reach out because we want to hang out with you guys. We want to party. We want to have a beer or whatever you want. Hey, if you don't don't drink beer, that's cool too. You just come and hang out and party with the video bros. Uh, but that wraps up MLW Fusion. That wraps up this episode of Fusion here on Video Bro Bobby Munson, our local establishment, and the Video Bros Network. Papa Smokes, that means it's time for you to tell everybody where they can find good old Papa coming up. All right. Well, I'm on the $8 Twitter nation at Smokes underscore Papa. And then I'm on Twitch at Papa underscore Smokes underscore. That's where you'll find Mr. Papa Smokes. Again, you want to check out our big sponsor there. It's Rogue Energy. Click that QR code or go to RogueEnergy.com and use the promo code OLEPODS for 10% off your order. It's great. It is the alternative to the energy drinks you find at the store. We're talking about a sugar-free, low-calorie, uh, vegan-friendly, uh, great packed with flavor opportunity for you and our friends over at rogueenergy.com remember that promo code ole pods uh you'll be able to catch me next coming up well actually you'll catch us next tomorrow night on prairie pro wrestling as we give you episode two of the bro show featuring el asesino this saturday stay tuned to prairie pro wrestling's youtube channel as well for another great matchup from prairie pro wrestling and then this sunday catch me with my brunch buster brother mr chris Parrish, as we bring you another episode of busted out in the meantime and in between time from myself and pop smokes cheers to every one of you stay safe and we'll see you next thursday take care everybody <laughs>